Hello students, this is Brock Skaggs. I'm going to make this relatively short video discussing mesh details inside of SOLIDWORKS, so specifically looking at SOLIDWORKS simulation and static studies. And so the example uh, that we'll kind of use to talk about this is the cantilever beam you see before you. Uh, it's nothing too uh, fantastic there. It's got a point load at the far right end on its free end. Uh, but one of the special things about this beam is that we are going to talk about it with a hole at a point there. And so you can see that point is X1 units away from the uh, fixed connection there. The hole is also not centered. And so it's at some C value as far as the bottom edge to the center of the hole. And then it has a certain radius with it. And so uh, the exact values we'll use in our model are shown there in bullet points. And so one thing we're going to do is play around with the mesh size uh, because here the mesh size could impact the results you're seeing from SOLIDWORKS. And you don't want to have too coarse of a mesh um, and get an incorrect result that you're using from SOLIDWORKS and using to uh, try to, to decide whether a design is acceptable or not. And so I won't get too much into the, the theory or analytical solution side of things here. Uh, I probably won't show a whole lot on the simulation side thing, of things as well, just more focusing on um, how to access the mesh tools and how to control them. And so uh, some of the analytical stuff is here before you. I'm using the RORX formula for stress and strain as the textbook to get the formulas for the stress concentration factor. Um, also, I've got a, a free body diagram of a chunk of the beam there in order to figure out the bending moment at that uh, given section where the center of the hole is at as well. In the end, uh, basically we're expecting to see a maximum normal stress around 1,621 PSI located near the bottom surface of that hole, um, which puts it in compression uh, for this application. And so with that, um, we'll go ahead and hop right into SOLIDWORKS. Uh, we'll go to this model first. And so all I've done is I already created the model as far as geometry goes, and now I'm going to go straight into a new static study. And so uh, here is our initial beam geometry there. Uh, just out of habit, I'll go ahead and apply a material for us. And so I just have alloy steel there. But really, we want to get down in here into mesh. And so if I right click on mesh, you've got create mesh here. And the first thing you see is kind of this dragging bar here that I can slide, or slide that I can move back and forth here. And so um, you really don't have any feedback on it. Um, you say, well, this is relatively more coarse. This is really fine. Uh, but you can't really tell anything about the actual element size itself here. And so to actually see that, you open up mesh parameters. And then you can see as I start to slide the slider to the left, uh, the mesh element size, which is right here, the global size you can see, as well as you have the, the tolerance there are getting larger and then as I slide it to the right you can see the global element size getting smaller and smaller there as well so fine here is roughly a global element size of 72 thousandths of an inch whereas the course was almost 290 thousandths of an inch and so let's just pick a, a value here I'm actually going to go past that value let's just say 0 0.5 and hit enter and create the mesh and so We've got the mesh created here. This is a very coarse mesh. You can see there's not very many elements here. Uh, basically, two elements links make up the overall height of the, the bar itself here. And so you might want some details about this mesh. And so the way you get the details is you right click on the mesh icon after you've already meshed it and you go down to details. And this will tell you some properties about the mesh itself here. And so things that you might be grabbing are element size. Um, here's tolerance. Here's the total number of nodes. Here's the total number of elements. Also has things like time to complete the mesh and so forth here. Here you can see it was a very coarse mesh. Um, so it didn't take very much time at all here. It's just showing zero there because uh, it only goes down to seconds. Uh, but depending on your mesh size, you may have something that is taking quite a bit longer. And so here um, I'll just go down to say 50 thousandths of an inch and so notice that's at the extreme other end now it's quite fine and so now when I hit go see it's already taken longer than the last one the last one was almost instantaneous this one took right around five seconds and you can see it's a much more fine mesh and so if I zoom in here a little closer to the hole hopefully you can see all the little tetrahedrals that make up this mesh and again, if we go back to the details, mesh properties, um, again, we're using a solid mesh here. Now I have many more elements that are used to make up this model. 
and it took seven seconds in order to generate the mesh. Uh, so generally the way you want it to be is the, the finer the mesh is the better, uh, especially for where you have very small and intricate features on the part that you're trying to figure out what the stresses look like on them. Uh, if you have too coarse of a mesh, uh, you can run into situations where you're not getting a valid result from your FEA plots. Another thing about this though is you sometimes don't want to mesh the entire part at uh, the same size. And so an example being here, um, here I would probably be very interested in having a, a smaller mesh around this hole because I'm interested in the stress distribution around the hole uh, due to the stress concentrations I know that are going to happen there. But I really don't need that same very small mesh size out here in this region of the part um, where there's not really any changes in the geometry happening. And so how do we go about accommodating that? Because the, what you don't want to have happen here is to have a very small mesh way out here and basically waste the computer's time and inevitably your time having the computer crunch through a bunch of numbers doing the calculations out here um, when you really don't need that fine of a, a resolution on the mesh size. And so uh, there is a way to kind of have the best of both worlds, have a, a coarse mesh where um, you aren't going to have much changes happening in the stress distributions and also you know um, how the stressors should act and behave, and then have a finer mesh um, near geometry changes like this where um, you're a little more interested in seeing what the stress concentrations are going to be. And so I'll just go back into Model tab, and what we're going to do is use the split line geometry in order to basically mark off an area or a region where we want to say, hey, let's have a smaller mesh in this region as compared to the rest of the part. And so to do that, I'm just going to create a sketch on this front face of my beam, and I'll go normal to it. And what I'll do is I'll just grab a center point rectangle, wake up the center of the hole, and come in here, make it a square, and we'll just say, 0.5 inch for the side length there. So now I have a, a square sketch centered on the center of the hole and it has a side length of 0.5 inches. And so now that I've got the sketch fully defined, what I'll do next is I'll exit the sketch. Notice it is still selected, so I'll go straight into the split line tool. Um, we'll use a projected split line, and here I'm just going to select the two faces it's going to project here. And so now that I've got those two faces selected, when I hit OK, now when I select this front face, I have two different faces. I've got this face and I've got this face. Same thing on the back side, two different ways to select here. And that'll help me when I go to the simulation side. And so here what I'll do is I'll go into New Study, I'll go Static 2, Static 2 Study here. Um, it's showing the split line geometry. And so now let's go ahead and create a mesh. And I'll create a pretty coarse mesh. Um, we'll just say quarter of an inch first, and so I'll hit OK. Uh, that creates a quarter inch element size throughout the entire body itself here. But you say, well, I want a finer mesh right around this hole. And so one way you could do that is you right click on mesh and you go to apply mesh control. And so when you apply the mesh control, you can see it's looking for faces, edges, vertices, and so forth there. as items you could select. And so here I'm going to select those three faces. I've got the two faces which are just planar faces uh, which I used the split line to create and then I've got that cylindrical face as well. And now this is a much smaller region of the part and I can have a very small element size right in there. And so I'll say 25 thousandths of an inch. And I'll hit OK. Uh, obviously is showing out of date now and so we need to remesh again and so one thing to notice is notice first the very coarse element size here right in next to the hole with just the defaults element size and that global element size being 25 thousandths of an or excuse me yeah 250 thousandths of an inch a quarter of an inch but now when I mesh and zoom out, you can see I have two very different element sizes. I've got a quarter inch element size way out here where I am very confident I can uh, determine what the stresses are. And then when I come in close to the hole, now I've got a much smaller element size there, uh, so which will give me better results right near the stress concentration where uh, the stresses are changing uh, quite rapidly here in a very small area. Uh, as usual, you should be able to go and pull some mesh details off of this.
as well. And so you can always come back here and say, well, the total element size was 26,305. And so that should be in between of the two extremes we saw earlier there. And so uh, this is how you go about changing mesh sizes uh, to fit the geometry of your specific part. And so just to show some examples on how that can change your results. Uh, what I've done here is I've got the same beam except I've got the split line stored in the configuration here. So I've got the default configuration that has uh, no split line, split line actually showing up in the split line configuration. And I've already ran some studies and so we'll first hop into the refinement region one. This one I had an active refinement region here. I'll edit the definition so we can see um, I had it at 15 thousandths of an inch uh, for the mesh controlled refinement region size and then if I go to the global element size it was three eighths of an inch there and so here we'll escape out of that um, I didn't really change anything so I can still trust these values and if I just come in here and probe right around in here uh, notice I've got 1676 um, pretty close to that 1695 is the max value uh, so those values are fairly close uh, to the 1621 value that I was expecting near the bottom of that hole but let's see what else we can have here as far as possible results and so here I'll switch back to the default configuration uh, so we can show studies 3 here and study 3 here's the result plot um, I believe it was a much coarser mesh if I remember right and so I'll just go to details this time uh, this had an element side of very coarse uh, 0 0.5 inches and now if I go and probe near the hole notice I'm not even in the the 1600s at all uh, that point there is a little less than 1400 and that's even less there and you can see it much different values right in here as compared to the exact same model uh, with a different mesh size right around the hole. And so uh, just comparing those two uh, shows you a difference. Uh, model hasn't changed. I haven't changed the geometry. I have not changed the loading or the fixtures, uh, but just changing that element size right in around the whole geometry is causing the stress results to be a little bit different there. And so that's one thing you need to check on when you're running the models. Make sure you have enough elements in the regions where uh, the stresses are going to be changing very quickly in order to make sure you have an accurate result plot. And so uh, thank you for watching the video and hopefully this helps you run your SOLIDWORKS simulations.